Karl Marx never left a detailed blueprint of how a communist society would be organized. But he did sketch its basic purposes, principles, policies, and institutions. The movement to communism, Marx thought, would develop in two stages. The first stage is the, so the socialist phase, which is characterized by two policies. One, the dictatorship of the proletariat. And two, the abolition of private property, wage labor, money, the market price system, competition, division of labor, money, and profits. Marxian socialism is a system defined by destruction. The ultimate goal of first stage socialism is to eliminate human selfishness. The second stage, the communist phase, is likewise characterized by two major policies. One, public ownership and regulation of the means of production and consumption. And two, the redistribution of all surplus value, that is profit, created by society. The communist phase is defined by reconstruction. Its ultimate moral goal is to build a new type of man, communist man who will be motivated by purely altruistic goals. Marx envisioned an entirely marketless society, controlled and directed from the top down by an elite core of social engineers. These central planners determined production outputs, that is, from each according to his ability, and then how goods and services are redistributed for the common good, that is, to each according to his need. In order to purge each man of his individual identity, the Marxian state seeks total control over man's mind and body. The dictatorship of the proletariat will control and regulate every aspect of life. It seeks to control all material production, distribution, and consumption. It establishes what and how much is to be produced, by what methods, and by whom it is to be distributed. It sets prices and wages. It commands individuals to work in certain areas of production or trade. It tells men where and with whom they can live and in what kind of house or apartment. It tells men where they can shop, what they can eat, where their children can go to school, and what they must study, what they will wear, where they can travel, what music they will listen to, what literature they will read, and what they can think, write, and say. In other words, the small elite that runs the state seeks to control systematically and absolutely all material and spiritual values. Absolute sameness is the end, and absolute control is the means.